Good morning everyone. Today's video is going to be super fun. Well, actually maybe it's not going to be fun because today we are going to be reading the one star reviews for some of my favorite books that I read this year or recently. Um, so yeah, I'm super excited to do this. A little nervous. One of my favorite booktubers does this video and it's one of my favorites of hers to watch. I think her title is Larry Reads. Larissa, if you know her, you know her. And yeah, she's just so fun. So I thought I would do something similar. We're just gonna get started. So we're actually gonna do my favorite book of all time and that is Twilight. I know, I know. You guys can go off in the comments. I don't care, but Twilight is my favorite absolute favorite book it has been since I first read it when I was like eight or nine I can't remember how old I was all I know is that I was way too young to be reading it but anyways basically I'm just gonna filter the comments to one star reviews and we're just gonna read it we're just gonna have a little fun time okay, this one is really really long okay it says Okay, I have to say that I picked this book up partly due to all the hype and partly because it's involved two of my favorite genres. I mean, so many people have recommended it to me and I finally got sick of hearing about it. So I picked it up and read it, or at least tried to. Okay. Okay. I first say that I am a huge romance and vampire supernatural fan. So when I first heard about the book, I was really excited to read it because it combined two of my favorite genres. Exactly, it's a perfect fantasy romance, come on. I really regret ever buying and forcing myself to finish it. I hate not finishing books even if I hate them. It was so bad. Though let me tell you what I really wanted to like. Really I did. I'm one of those people who likes a lot of popular things. Twilight was popular so I figured I would love it just like everyone else. But I was very, very wrong and they emphasized the second very, okay? And they have like a full list. I, I'm super interested to keep on reading. A lot of fans wonder why I hate this book so much, and here's my list, and it's a pretty long one, so get ready. Guys, if you don't have a stack already, get one. Number one, lack of characterization. Okay. Okay. <laughs> now, if you were critiquing the movie, I would agree with this. Personalities are kind of subdued in the movie, but the book shows the characters, okay? So, literally, she starts off with Bella. Who do you think I've based my entire personality off for the past 20 years of my life? Let's keep on reading. Okay, I absolutely hated this girl. She was the worst female protagonist I've ever read about. She's stupid, shallow, selfish, and just plain annoying. I cannot believe those words just left my mouth. I love my girl Bella. Do not, don't, these words did not come from my mouth. I do not agree with this whatsoever, okay? To mention she's pathetically dependent on Edward. I mean, come on, no girl should be that dependent on a boy. Not only is it pathetic, but it's very unhealthy. She was, also a, she was also a clumsy little damsel in distress who was dumb enough to get herself into situations that she couldn't get out of. Okay, that's giving what was she wearing vibes. Just, I don't know. Anyways, okay. I would have loved for Meyer to have given her a backbone so she could have done something useful instead of whining and doing stupid, idiotic things that no remotely intelligent teenage girl would actually do. Not to mention the fact that she is apparently very plain looking. If that's the case, then why are there several guys fawning over her? And according to Meyer, one of them is a teacher. Um, ew. Bella is not Mary Sue. Simple at that. And I hate Mary Sue's. What's wrong with Mary Sue's? Okay? What's wrong with them? Are we projecting a little bit? Edward. Okay, this boy is way too possessive and stalkerish. It is not romantic of him to sneak into Bella's room and watch her sleep. It's creepy and wrong. I think everyone, I think everyone when they're reading Twilight, they know that, but they avoid it because it's supposed to be like this idealistic, like, vampire-esque story. So, anyways, let's keep on reading. Bad boys usually don't sit there and say, I'm dangerous, stay away, etc. all the time. I also hated the fact that Bella describes some part of his body every other page. It was completely unnecessary. Okay, we get the fact that he's hot, Bella. Now move on. I could go on and on about all the characters. Every single one of them was a flat cardboard cutout that did not seem realistic at all. Number two, writing style. Purple prose. Ew to this. Seriously, all the purple prose made me want to throw the book across the room. And that's sad. I liked how um, concise that was. Pretty good. Descriptions. I know I said up there that I got sick of reading about how gorgeous some part of Edward's body was every other paragraph, and if that wasn't bad enough, what's worse than 
than it is the fact that even with all the unnecessary description of him and everyone else, though mostly him since Bella is that shallow, I still had a hard time picturing him or any of the characters in my head for that matter. I also had a hard time picturing a lot of the setting and the action in my head as well. It's kind of sad really. There was so much description you would think that everything, Edward especially, would be embedded into my brain. But no, that's what makes me wonder why so many fans find Edward so hot. I never got a clear picture of him in my head to even begin to form an opinion about whether he was hot or not. Seriously, Meyer completely abused the dictionary and the thesaurus while writing this book, so much so that I think she should never be allowed to play at either one ever again. Okay, that is really funny. That's good. There are so many big descriptive words used that could be replaced by smaller words that look and sound better. Half of the time, the words that she does that she does use doesn't really go with what she's trying to say. Simply put, Stephanie Meyer is a moron. Oh, that is harsh. And doesn't know that when writing, you are supposed to use a Thor's sparingly, aka only when it is truly needed and not any time you damn well please. It really ruins everything if it's used too much, as Meyer has perfectly portrayed with this atrocious book. Okay, let's just, I'm not even, I have no comments, we're gonna keep on reading. I will say, this review is like very well written, and like you can tell like they know what they're talking about when it comes to like literary terms and things like that, so. That is a good thing. We know we have a seasoned reader that's writing this, so that's important. But, okay, this plot gets its own cate category because it pissed me off so much. I mean, seriously, where was it? It was nothing but sappy, gag-worthy fluff between Edward and Bella until page 400 or so, but something finally happened. And even then, it went by so fast and was not explained well at all, since Bella conveniently fainted during it, which is such a cop-out. It seemed to me that Meyer just threw it in there and it was only put there in the first place so that she could point at it and say, look, there's a plot right there, when people like me came around and said otherwise. But that's not a plot. The plot should not take 400 pages to start. And no, the whole romance between Bella and Edward is not the plot. This is especially the case since we knew from the beginning, thanks to the moronic giveaway on the back cover that states that Bella and Edward were going to fall in love. Speaking of that, who the hell thought it would be a good idea to give away the fact that Edward was a vampire on the back cover? I mean, really? That took away any suspense mystery the book might have had for the reader about what he was. So while Bella was stupidly wondering what he was, I was sitting there yelling at her for being such a moron and not seeing what was right in front of her. Honestly, I think that's a very good critique. I feel like that should have been left off. Like, now that I'm looking at it, Although I may not agree with everything this reviewer is saying, that's actually a really good point. Plot holes. The one thing that drove me absolutely crazy was the fact that no one in the small town of Forks noticed that the Colons never aged, and the children never graduated and went on to college. I mean, if, they, if they've been there for more than four years, then I'm assuming that someone would have noticed. The town could not be full of that many morons. Okay, I've been told several times that Colons have been only have been only been living in Forks for about two years. I guess all the purple pros distracted me from reading and remembering that little detail. So that must have been a note because I was about to say that. Speaking of school, why is the world why in the world would they willingly choose to take high school over and over again? Especially since they all have several college degrees, which leads me to wonder why since they are so human loving, they can't do something useful with their education like Car Carlisle, instead of sitting on their butts all day and just being useless. I know they need to fit in, but seriously, that's just stupid. They could always pretend that they're homeschooled. It's not that uncommon these days. Since that's how the clones fit into society, that means they have to move every four or five years to avoid suspicion, right? Wow, that must really suck. However, they wouldn't have to do that if they didn't put the younger ones in school, since if they were in the workforce and being useful to society, then they could stay for a lot longer before people started wondering why they don't age. But I think I know why Edward and his siblings tortured themselves day by day after going day after day by going to high school. Stephanie Meyer wasn't created and creative enough to come up with an, any other way for Edward and Bella to meet. It would have made more sense for them to have been neighbors or something. I can come up with several nice ideas about how that would have turned out and it would have been much better. I've been told that there are more, but those are the two that really bug me though. Though I love the fans' response to the mention of any plot hole, the rabid ones, not the sane ones of course, it usually goes like this. Well, it is a fictional vampire book. That's a stupid reason. Just because it's a book with vampires doesn't mean it's exempt from having to be realistic and not having glaring plot holes. I've also been told that there are even more in later books, but I'm not about to torture myself by reading the rest of the series just to find them and list them. I have better things to do with my time, like reading books that are actually good and not a waste of time or money. Oh my gosh, this is amazing because I was going to say that. Honestly, this reviewer is kind of slain because I was going to be like, it's a vampire fictional book. Like, we can just ignore that. But 
the reviewers write like when you're writing i guess like you should this is good because this is making me think because i blindly love twilight so much that these are things that i just ignore and i do appreciate this fam or this reviewer bringing them up i am literally there is so much more there's a number six which is called vampires there's a number seven called messages and that has seven points under it there's a number eight called the obsession and yeah i just i think that is insane so i'm probably not gonna read the entire thing because this i'm already at 12 minutes recording and that is insane and i'm not gonna read anymore i'm just gonna let you guys read it if you want um it was posted in 2008 so like right after the book came out which i think is pretty cool but yeah we're gonna move on to the second book which is one of my favorite books that i read this year it's not my first time reading it um it was actually my second time rereading it but i thought it was so good so i wanted to include that and that is the cruel prince i think it is important to bring this book up because we have the kind of like spinoff series coming from it which is called the stolen air which will be following oak so yeah i just filtered this to one star ratings and let's get started viewer said 384 pages zero substance unless you call pages littered with problematic substance i don't get it i just don't effing get it before this book is my first experience with Holly Black. It will either make or break our future relationship. After. Any plans for a potential future relationship is hereby terminated. Over. Done with. Null and void. Cancelled. You get the point. When you go into a book expecting gold and it ends up being your worst read of the year in January, oh, the rage. Okay, yeah, it's actually just sort of the funniest thing. That cardigan fairy prick alcoholic prince just declared how he hates thinking about you, and mind you, there is no tension build up between these two. Then you go ahead and kiss him? What the heck? You're just confused as you are. You and your weak power obsessed self. Here is your longtime enemy. He says he hates you, thinks about you constantly. You hate him too, so the most reasonable thing to do is smooch his stink breath, unwashed wine fueled mouth. Listen, just because he's fake doesn't mean his breath doesn't get sour after all that liquor. Like, he hasn't even refreshed his mouth with a fake Colgate all he's had is liquor for days. Mance hasn't even brushed. Ew. Then again, don't you hate him? I'm sorry. That is actually so funny. That is very, very funny. This review goes on and on and on. Oh my gosh, guys, I just saw a comment. First of all, the writing is horrendous. It's the worst case of tell, not show, I've ever seen. Twilight was better written than, than this. We were meant to see that comment, okay? But it's good. Thanks to this book, my useless but has something to add to my resume. I finished The Cruel Prince even though I was bored to death. And really, really hope that whoever my future boss is, they're geeky enough to know how difficult it is to finish a boring book because honestly, I think this is the only thing I'm good at, wasting time on trashy books. I am so furious at this book because it was effing soulless. There was absolutely no substance to it whatsoever. There was no world building, no character growth, no interesting writing, no nothing. Come on, the world is built up so well, I think. I think The Cruel Prince is even more of a fantasy than it is a romance. It's a fantasy with a subplot of romance. And I think for a YA book, Holly Black did a really good job at building up a world where we can learn about like how the fae rule it. And I think there was a map, I think. And I know that doesn't like if you draw a map at a reader. Some readers don't look at it. Some readers don't reference it. Um, but I'm just saying like there was some sort of world building. But that is in my five-star opinion of this book, so I get that. I haven't mentioned Carden because honestly, I can't give two pickles about him. He was beautiful, all right? But there's honestly nothing interesting about him. <laughs> he had a tail, okay? He literally had a tail. I mean, look at this. Look at him. I guess that just to prove her point that she said he was beautiful and had nothing else going on. Alrighty, the next one, second to last, because we're only doing four books in this, is Beach Read. I was going to do Book Lovers because that book came out, but honestly, Beach Read is my favorite Emily Henry book still to this date, and so I just thought if we're doing reviews for my loved books, that that's my favorite, so we're going to look at that one. Let's get into it. I think this one's really going to hurt because I've been wanting to reread this book, so this might influence my opinion on actually deciding to reread, so hopefully it doesn't. Fingers crossed. Okay. His eyes were doing the thing, the gust thing, and it made my heart flutter almost painfully. I don't get it. What am I missing here? 
Beach Read originally caught my eye because its premise reminded me of Summer Villa, one of my favorite Hallmark movies. I know, I'm publicly admitting to being a sappy romantic at heart, and I'm proud of it. So why couldn't I get into the story at all? For one, I didn't feel any chemistry between January, January and Gus. Nothing. Their interactions are so awkward and stilted it's almost painful. They'll say mundane, mundane and platonic things to each other and then sporadically January will remind us that he is filling her abdomen or pulling between her legs and I'm like, huh? I can't imagine how two people could possibly fall in love or less while saying such bland things to each other. Um, this is a good start. If I have to read another crooked smile again, I'm going to die. That's it. <laughs> How do people cry while reading this? I wanted to bang my head against the wall. I think I have no heart. Unofficially taking a break that no one asks for from romance because I'm apparently a stone cold bee unless you name it. your name is James Herondale. <sighs> oh my god, what? The female character is annoying. Can't help it. What's wrong with January? Okay, January was amazing. I truly think this might have been the worst book I've ever read. It literally took me so long to read it because I never wanted to know what was happening with the two most unlikable characters ever imaginable. Who would ever fall in love with Gus? I did. I fell in love with Gus. It was me. His miserable, messy, immature little man, and <laughs> don't even get me started on January, who is just the most insufferable, selfish human. Like they actually are the worst. If you think they're the worst, maybe like them together is the best, so. I didn't care about any hardships either of them went through because they handled everything in life so poorly. Very woe is me, which like, give me a break. Just read the letters your dad left you, get over it, go to therapy. This book actually made me roll my eyes more than a hundred times that I think my eyes are permanently damaged. If I have to read the word clavicle, hip bone, or crooked smile again, I'll sue. The end actually annoyed me so much. I'll be in a bad mood for the rest of the days. Zero stars, for sure. We're going to go to the last book, which I will say this is not my favorite Colleen Hoover book, but we're going to be reading reviews for It Starts With Us. I did read it five stars. I thought it was like a not necessary book, but I thought it was a sweet conclusion to It Ends With Us. And I think since it just came out, it would be fun to end this book um, or end this video on a book that I'm sure has a lot of... I feel like this book is actually very hated, so we're going to get into it. And a good one to start with. I'll be requesting a fat check from Coho for making me waste my time reading this unnecessary book. No, no, no. This one is even better. Haven't read, but I hate seeing Colleen Cooper fans happy. Update. It was genuinely terrible. Like, okay, the fact that she said she hates seeing Coho fans happy. Yeah. I feel like a lot of people feel that way. Genuinely. I don't support burning books, but this one is an exception. Not gonna read it, just wanted to give Coho one star because I hate her. You gotta at least read the book, okay? This book out of curiosity, but I think I really should have just stayed curious. We'll, we'll end with this one. F this book. Okay guys, I think I'm gonna end this video here. I am going to be doing reading good reviews for my least favorite books. If you want to see that video, just make sure to subscribe. I am posting for the first 12 days of December all book related content. I know it's Bookmas Day 9, so we have like three more days left and that is so crazy and so exciting. But yeah, I am going to go. Let me know what you guys want to see in the future and I will talk to you guys very soon. Peace and love. Bye guys.